In this video, we're going to construct a proof from one of your homework questions. And the idea here is not that I've now completed a proof for you, but it is that I've taken you through the process in which you should go through in order to prove something. We all know that proofs are not easy. They're quite difficult. So there are certain things that I'm going to be looking for, and there are certain tips and tricks that I'm going to give you in this video. So please just make sure you watch it in its entirety and let me know if you have questions. The particular proof we're going to look at is question 0.6.2 in your textbook, which asks us to prove Euclid's proposition I32, which is the angle sum theorem, which states that for every triangle, the sum of the measures of the interior of angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. Certain things that I'm going to be looking for when you complete a proof. First of all, there are two things that I'm going to look for based on what we are asked to prove. A given and a what to show or what to prove. Those two things should come from the theorem itself. Now, what I don't want you to do is to take exactly what's written and just recopy it or circle and use arrows and whatnot. What I do want you to do is I want you to make it a little bit more specific. So here it says for every triangle. So given is that we have a triangle. So for given, I'm not going to write, I have a triangle. I'm going to be specific and say, let's let triangle ABC be a triangle. And in addition, I'm going to then draw triangle ABC. Now, what am I trying to show? Based on the triangle ABC, I want to show that the sum of the measures of the interior angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. So I could say measure angle ACB, blah, 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 and write it out equals 180. Or because I'm lazy, I'm going to use the alpha triangle ABC equals 180 degrees, which is saying the same thing. The sum of the measures of the interior angles of triangle ABC is equal to 180 degrees. Now from here, I've done the easy part, um, but it's not just, it's an important part because I need to know what values am I going to be using or what vertices am I going to be using and so forth. Now the next part is obviously just the proof itself. Now, when I'm constructing a proof, I should have a reason for every single thing that I do. The reasons that I can use have to be definitions, have to be theorems that we already know, or other mathematical things like we know that we can subtract the same thing from each side of an equation, or we can substitute things that are equal. So anything that's mathematically sound along with definitions and theorems that we already know. Now when I say theorems that we already know, I mean that we've already covered in this textbook. I encourage you not to just Google how to prove something because they might be using a theorem that we haven't covered. So along those lines, my suggestion to you is as you're reading through the textbook, make yourself a list of all of the definitions and make yourself another list of all of the theorems that we've covered, because those are the things that you're going to refer back to, to fill in all of the things of the proof. Now, when I get to the end of the proof, my final statement should be therefore, and then it's whatever I've used for what to prove. So I should be able to say, the sum of the measures of triangle A, B, C is equal to 180 degrees. That should be exactly the same each time. So now let's fill in the middle. How do I know how to fill in the middle? Well, you don't, and quite often it's going to take you a little while to figure it out. Now for this particular question, they have given me a hint, and the hint says, let triangle ABC be a triangle. Well, I've already done that, that was my given. Draw a line through C, so they're wanting me to draw a line right here through C that is parallel to the line through A and B, and then apply the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem. So again, 
I'm assuming at this point that you've already read the textbook up to section 6, 0 0.6, which has all of the theorems that I can use up to this point. So the important thing here is, yes, I'm going to use the hint that they've given me, but I'm going to make sure that I am specific about that in my proof. So to prove, I'm going to say I already have, I already have this statement. Let triangle ABC be a triangle. So I'm going to say construct point D. And there's different ways to do it correctly as long as you, you know, correctly state how you're doing it. I'm going to say construct point D um, on the exterior of triangle ABC. And you're going to find that you're going to use the statement such that, whoops, maybe I could spell it right, such that. Because if I say construct point D on the exterior, D could be anywhere. But I want D specifically to be on the exterior of ABC such that, and then I can either say AB is parallel to CD, or I'm going to go ahead and say angle A, B, C, this guy is congruent to angle B, C, D, which means D has to be over here because I want these two guys to be congruent. Now you might be saying, why? You're making it harder than it needs to be. Just say A, B is parallel to C, D. Well, because I already know how I'm going to prove this particular theorem, and that is going to be to show that if I have three angles that create a nice straight line right here, that those are going to add up to 180 degrees, and then I'm just going to do some substitution with angles that are congruent. So I'm saying that angle ABC is congruent to angle BCD, and that um, is the way that I'm constructing it. So I'm constructing it so that that is true. And then I can say, hence, hence is just a fancy way to say therefore. We typically say therefore to the end of the proof. So hence, line AB, and when we're talking about lines, we should be using the whole line, is parallel to line CD and then I need to say why. So why can I say that AB is parallel to CD? Well, because we have the alternate interior angles theorem. So I'm going to stop there for a minute and just remind you that this is one way to give the reason is to not state it necessarily in words within the text of the proof, but to just put it in parentheses at the end. So that's one way to do it. Now the alternate interior angles theorem says if you have alternate interior angles that are congruent, the two lines are parallel. So that's what I've shown so far. Now what else am I going to do? Well, I know that I have two lines that are parallel. Feel free to mark up your picture as you go. So now I have those two lines that are parallel. And then I'm going to say, uh, let me find the right color again, that I'm going to say also, or hence, or then, I can say angle BAC is congruent to angle AC, uh-oh, I can't do that yet. So let's go back. Why can't I do that yet? Because I don't have a point over there. So I'm going to construct a point. I'm going to construct point E. Oops, point E on line CD. Again, such that, because I want to be specific about where E is going to be, I need E star C star D which basically says C is between E and D. 
So E has to be over here. C has to be between E and D. So such that E star C star D, or that C is between E and D. Now I can say, hence, or then, and now I'm going to go back to say, angle BAC is congruent to angle ACE. So I've got, oops, I'm going to go ahead and use two lines here. Even though I've used different colors, I'm going to use the proper geometric notation. One line for one congruent angle and then two lines for the next congruent angle and so forth. So now what do I have? Well, I'm getting close. And remember, what I'm looking at here is I know I have a linear pair theorem. And the linear pair theorem says that if you have two angles that make a straight line, then the measure of those angles is equal to 180 degrees. So I'm going to say by two applications, of the linear pair theorem. Oops, hold the phone. I'm sorry, let me go back. I did not give a reason why this was true. Why are those two congruent? That is the converse to the alternate interior angles theorem, which says if you have two lines that are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to the last one by two applications of the linear pair theorem. Then I'm going to say that these three angles add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to say angle E C A. I'm sorry, I'm going to do A C E just because that's the way that I've written it here. A C E, the measure of angle A C E plus the measure of angle A C B plus the measure of angle, and again, I'm gonna do the same order that I did before, which was BCD um, is equal to 180 degrees. And then I'm going to say by substitution, and again, substitution isn't a theorem, it isn't a definition, but it is a you know, a mathematical construct that we understand. We're substituting things that are congruent. So I can say by substitution, and then I'm replacing ACE, which is this angle that I've marked with the two lines. I'm going to replace that with measure angle BAC. Measure angle ACB is going to stay the same. That's this guy. I'm going to get rid of those other purples. And then plus measure angle instead of BCD, which is this guy on the outside, I'm going to use ABC or yeah, ABC. And I'm going to see say that is equal to 180 degrees. Now, what do you notice about those three angles? Those are the three angles that are the interior angles of the triangle. Therefore, the measure of the interior angles, the sum of the measure of the interior angles of the triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, I have proven what I need to prove. So you can do the therefore, you can do the little box at the end that says, you know, what I've proven, QED, which is, I've, which was what to, which was what we were supposed to prove or something like that. Any of those things are fine. Uh, just make sure that when you get to the end, what you've done is you have a reason for every statement that you've uh, made or a definition, a theorem, a mathematical construct that has already been proven. Um, and at the end, you get to whatever it is that you were supposed to show.